if you believe in this, if enough proof is provided to you to believe in this, then cross is broken. There is one meaning, the meaning we prefer. If you reject that meaning, then the only alternative left to you is that meaning which is presented and adhered to very tenaciously by the anti Ahmadiyya mullahs all over the world. They say, no, 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 this is nonsense. We will not permit you to interpret the Holy Quran sensibly. What right have you got to interpret the Holy Quran or the Holy Hadith sensibly? Let us follow the literal meaning exactly, verbatim, as it expresses itself. So to say, we believe that Jesus would descend from heaven, literally the same person as lived around 2,000 years ago. Where is he now when we inquire? They say somewhere between this world and the other world, dangling somewhere in the fourth heaven, by himself, alone. Because all prophets are dead and they have gone to the other world. Jesus is still alive, so he's preserved before that border. And according to them, that border lies somewhere in the fourth heaven. This, this is a little meaning. At least they're honest that, in that much that they stick to the little meaning. But this is the absurdity they have to believe and they want all the other Muslims to believe. But then follows the greater absurdities, compounded absurdities. They say Jesus would come, say, after 2,000 years. So far he has not come according to them. Then what would he find? He would find a Dajjal, a huge giant, the dimensions of which are so incredible that even such a man is not mentioned in fairy tales or tales of the jinns. No giant will you find mentioned as big and as huge as the, the child. So he said there would actually be a joint born and he would travel the whole earth and conquer every nation and every people. Now what would be the mode of his travel? How would he travel so fast? Would he run very fast? They say, no, no. The Hadith also tells us that a donkey would be born to carry this huge giant. And the donkey would be as huge, matchingly, as the giant himself would be. The distance between two air lobes would be 105 feet. And as far as his hugeness is concerned, he will carry the giant on his back to travel around the world. But at the same time, there will be side openings in his belly. And he would stop at stages. And it would be announced that the time for the giant to depart has come. So many minutes left, so many minutes left, come and get in. And people would rush in and enter the belly of the giant from the side openings, from both sides. Strange sort of giant, with a strange sort of donkey to help him. And then the Hadith tells us that this donkey would not eat fodder. It would be a fire-driven donkey, fire-powered donkey. It would eat only f fire to get its uh, energy to move, to function as, as, as a life thing does. So as against the fodder driven donkeys, a new donkey would be created for the sake of the jal, which would be fire-powered. This is very clear. Now, what would be the speed of that donkey? How fast would he carry that giant and the people in his bellies? The speed, according to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would vary from land to sea to air. On the land he is described to be able to travel as fast as ordinarily people travel for one month, and the, if, uh, travel a distance in one month, according to the old culture, 
old system. That donkey would cover the same distance in one hour. So instead of 30 days continuous journey, he would carry his passengers to the destiny within one hour. That fast will he move. Will he move only on land or also in the sea? The hadith says, yes, he would be able to swim on the oceans and he will not drown. The same donkey, the same firepower donkey is mentioned in the tradition to go across oceans and he would not sink. But he would carry even greater loads on his back. It is said that it would be the same donkey employed by the Dajjal, the power which owns it, to transport wheat and other food aids to poorer nations as if that donkey would be carrying mountains of food on its back when it swims in the ocean. And that food would be sent not only not to the poor people of all the world indiscriminately. That would be sent only to those to whom who bow to the Jal and his supremacy. So the aid would be tied, would be linked. It would not be free aid to Ethiopia, for instance, when it dies of hunger, or to Somalia when it dies of hunger, because they would not be tied up with the American policies. That aid would be tied only to those, to the condition that they accept the supremacy of their master, the Jal, and then they will be provided with food, otherwise not. Now, this donkey would do this task according to the traditions. But this is not all the surprise for us. The Holy Prophet says that donkey would be able to fly above the cloud line because he says at times he would make a jump as big as if his one foot was in the east and second would be in the west. So any aeroplanes which takes off from India, from Africa, from Pakistan or any other eastern countries and lands either in Europe or in America, continues to declare the truth of the Holy Prophet, that this is what he envisioned, this is what he saw beforehand. And I am here as an evidence that he was a true prophet of Allah. His prophecy is right. That is when it is interpreted our way. When you believe that the, the prophecy was metaphorical, it didn't mean a little donkey. It meant a mode of travel only. A mode of travel which would be a land mode of travel, sea mode of travel, air mode of travel. But the common feature would be that all these modes will be fire-powered as against the food of donkeys. So this is again a metaphorical issue. But not so with the other mullahs. They said, no, 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 don't be absurd. When Hazrat Rasulullah said such a donkey would be born, believe it would be born. If not today, tomorrow. You see a huge donkey born out of a weakling mother, ordinary mother, donkey, who would grow to this abnormal size. And then you will see the giant also appearing from so nowhere. And then he would start riding and there will be opening made on the side of the donkey. All these modern planes will be abandoned. All the trains and the ships would be abandoned. A new mode of travel will be provided to mankind. They would always sit in the, prefer to sit in the belly of the donkey. This is what they would have. Which side would, are you on? Consult your conscience. Which is a greater tribute <coughs> to the greatness of Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This meaningful interpretation or that nonsensical interpretation which puts to shame even the worst fairy tales, if taken literally. Thank you. Shukran.